안녕하세요. 아시아경제TV 코인 인터뷰입니다. 저는 오늘 진행을 맡은 김호경입니다. 오늘 코인 인터뷰를 찾아주신 게스트는요. ETC 대부의 이고르 얼타모노 대표님입니다. So today we have uh, Mr. Igor Artamono, the CEO of ETC Dev. Hello and welcome to the studio. Hello. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, should I introduce myself? No, no, no uh, yeah, could you please briefly uh, introduce yourself to our coin viewers? Uh, yeah, so yeah, my name is Igor Artamonov and I'm a founder and uh, tech lead uh, of uh, ETC Dev team, which is working on Carl uh, protocol level projects of Ethereum Classic. Mm -hmm. Uh, I need to mention there is a few other companies working on Ethereum Classic and they received that one of them. Mm -hmm. Is it your first time being here in Korea? Yes, first time. Uh, just came the day before yesterday for, for the conference. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't have a chance actually to, to look uh, around. So uh -huh. Are you going to have t a little bit of time to mm -hmm. look around Korea? No, around? leaving in a couple of hours oh, after the interview. Really? Oh, wow. How do you like Korea? As far as you s what you I saw? I don't know. I didn't see anything. I just <laughs> saw it from my window in the uh -huh. huddle. That's it. Oh, That's okay. I <laughs> so let's get started with our coin interview. Uh, starting off with the basic question. What is Ethereum Classic? Um, okay. So Ethereum Classic uh, is, a, is a regional chain uh, of Ethereum, uh, which uh, happened when Ethereum ETH forked uh, after the DAO fork, mm -hmm. uh, after the DAO incident. Uh, and July 2016. So some people, mm -hmm. a community, uh, followed the original chain without upgrading their software. And uh, uh, we called it Ethereum Classic uh, somehow. And so here we are, mm -hmm. we have Ethereum Classic. Nice. Uh, there is a lot of uh, other coins, right? Mm -hmm. um, can you, could you please tell us about the advantages of Ethereum Classic over all the other coins? Uh, yeah, sure. That's a good question, actually. So when you say uh, coins, uh, uh, you probably mean all coins, include uh, there are many of types of coins, right? We have uh, like Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, Dogecoin, uh, this kind of coins, which is a end user product for, for people. You can send money, transfer money. And uh, there are other types like uh, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Ethereum ETH, both of them more uh, like a platform for developers to build their applications. Mm -hmm. And they can develop their coins, tokens, and whatever on, on top of uh, Ethereum. That's uh, the main advantage of Ethereum-based blockchains. You can build your own products, not just send coins. Um, it seems to tell uh, the, it, it, it's, it's hard to tell the difference between Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Mm. So what is the actual, like how can we tell the dif tell them difference apart clearly? <laughs> the point that there is no technical uh, different at mm -hmm. this moment uh, mm -hmm. between uh, between these two blockchains. Uh, difference mostly in uh, in the philosophy behind the blockchains. Right. It affects, of course, uh, technology and products and projects. Uh, but uh, so when community fault original chain, uh, um, we have after that we uh, we got few uh, independent parties to start from community and uh, the main uh, the main philosophy behind uh, Ethereum Classic is uh, decentralization of authority of power of finance and uh, same as uh, Bitcoin there is no like a central entity that controls everything mm -hmm. uh, so that's the main difference uh, with uh, Ethereum. So in Ethereum, you have foundation, we have our, so our organization that do all marketing and all this stuff uh, centralized in a centralized way. Right. That, that's the main difference between uh, the two? Yeah, there is technical mm -hmm. differences. Uh, so, so currently, yeah, uh, both, uh, both platforms are like kind of uh, person compatible. There may, may be minor differences, mm -hmm. but not noticeable for, even for developers. Uh, and actually, yeah, that's uh, one of the main questions I have uh, with people, with engineers. So, so I, I'm an engineer mostly, and mostly talking to engineers. Mm -hmm. And so they, they ask a question like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like how we can start with Ethereum Classic? I know how to, uh, how to use Ethereum, but I don't know how to use Ethereum Classic. Mm -hmm. And most people don't realize that uh, you can use the same tools, same, uh, same documentation, same everything for, for Ethereum Classic, uh, technically. But we uh, we move in different directions, I think. So Ethereum is more focused on uh, financial aspect of blockchain, on ICOs, on tokens. But we're more interested in making some decentralized way of uh, agreement between machines, some machine-to-machine -machine product of, of communications mm -hmm. and agreements. 
So it will be autonomous things, uh, uh, Internet of Things, and, and, and so on. So could you please tell us more about the IoT? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. So uh, IoT is Internet of Things. Uh, it's a wide term uh, which covers uh, all the small devices connected to each other, communicating with each other. Uh, so uh, we believe that uh, blockchain and Ethereum Classic smart contracts uh, are a good technology for building IoT systems. We talked to a lot of uh, IT engineers and we see the problem that they have currently it can be solved uh, with uh, Ethereum Classic technology. Is not quite right uh, here yet, uh, but we focus on optimization of virtual machine to, to allow developers to build uh, more efficient smart contracts to, that will be able to, to work on IT. And the reason why we think that uh, it's a uh, good uh, use of technology uh, that the, uh, all current systems, IT systems, are uh, built uh, with a centralized nature. We have you have a server, maybe a small server in your home, or something for home automation. And it can be, and it's, we think it should be replaced be, with uh, decentralized systems. Uh, so Ethereum Classic is a really, uh, really good technology that can solve this problem and allow to build decentralized systems uh, even for, for you home automation. Nice. Uh, so the current market price of Ethereum right now is 650,000 won. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, Ethereum Classic is only 16,000 won. Um, the price gap between these two is huge, uh, in spite of the fact that they share exactly the same root. So what is the factor that caused this price gap? Oh, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm actually the uh, right person to, to answer that question. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, yeah, we and RCDF, we just focusing on technology side, uh, technology aspect of the platform. Uh, we are not traders, we are not investors, we don't have much stake in, in the system. And we don't really follow the prices. Uh, but uh, I have some thoughts about it. Uh, focus of ETH mm -hmm. on ICOs, on, on tokens, so, uh, and uh, how they do all this marketing stuff. So a lot of people come into ETH uh, to buy, uh, to in invest in ICOs. And it's all cap capital comes to, to uh, the whole market capitalization of ETH, and we don't have much ICOs. So you can do ICO, but mm -hmm. the massive community doesn't like the ICOs in Ethereum Classic, so mm, not, not so much ICOs, mm -hmm. and not so many. Mm, but, so that's the main reason of difference. And also I think uh, currently all the prices are just, uh, just trading stuff, just uh, it's unrelated to development, unrelated to technology, uh, there is no relation. I don't see any relation between price and technology advantages uh, mm -hmm. in different uh, blockchain projects currently. I see. Okay, so uh, Ethereum doesn't have an insurance limit, but um, Ethereum Classic sets a limit for its insurance up to 230 million coins mm -hmm. and a decrease in mining rewards as well. Mm -hmm. uh, for what reason did Ethereum Classic set these kinds of restrictions? Um, um, I have uh, a lot of conversation in this community about uh, this idea. I was again that idea, as, as many of engineers, it was proposed by some member of community, and uh, he finally convinced us. So idea be, uh, behind that against uh, uh, to to decentralize uh, blockchain. Uh, so m most people don't know, I think that uh, that seventy percent of uh, Ethereum, ETH, ETC current coins, like seventy million coins are uh, pre-sale and, uh, and controlled by foundation or people who invested initially. That's a big number, it's more than 50% of coins. And uh, that's, that controls everything. So we decided that we don't want to have more than 30% of this initial stake in the system uh, to avoid centralization, but we still don't want to have infinite amount of coins. Uh, so um, the most closest and proven uh, number was uh, Bitcoin uh, number, so 21 million. Of course, we can't have 21 million uh, mm -hmm. because we already had at that moment like 90 something million of coins. Uh, so the target number was uh, 210 million. And uh, do the a similar halving like in Bitcoin, but we actually have 20 person uh, to make it sl uh, uh, not so, not, not towards big steps. 
So, yeah, we got this number. Uh, we, uh, we wasn't able to get exactly 210 uh, because of uh, the technical differences between Bitcoin and Ethereum, but we found a close number, like 230,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. If Ethereum finally succeeds in switching to POS, it will save the cost per unit and increase the transaction capacity. Plus, uh, in sharding strategy, each transaction cost will hold various multi-chains as well. Uh, so what characteristics of Ethereum Classic would provide competitive advantage over Ethereum? So uh, we are staying on, on proof of work because we believe it's the um, uh, most secure consensus algorithm for blockchains. Mm -hmm. And it's the main idea uh, of, of all decentralization stuff, that uh, uh, security is, uh, uh, is the most important part of, of blockchain. Mm -hmm. So most people come into blockchain because of that, uh, at least before. Uh, so we stay on proof of work, uh, but uh, the problem with, um, with scale, it's, it's not actually related to proof of stake or proof of work. Uh, it's just, um, just a technical problem, how to, how to split, uh, how to move uh, out these transactions, everything. So in Bitcoin, we have Lightning Network, and we're working on a similar idea for, for Ethereum Classic, to move out uh, some transactions uh, to, to site, the site chain. Uh, and it's much harder to do for in Ethereum uh, kind of blockchain because we don't have uh, transfers of value, but we have transfer of uh, uh, operations, like any kind of operations. Uh, but yeah, we work in this direction too. And as far as I know, uh, ETH is working on similar ideas. And we'll see how it will go. Sounds good. Uh, the b biggest issue right now with Ethereum Classic is that it isn't compatible with uh, Ethereum hard fork. Mm -hmm. uh, and this results in failure of updates like transaction from POW to POS. Mm -hmm. So what is the purpose of designing Ethereum Classic to be not compatible with Ethereum? Uh, uh, we are compatible, actually, mm -hmm. technically. Mm -hmm. uh, except that the DAO fork and proof of stake. Uh, so we didn't support uh, the DAO fork, uh, mm -hmm. and we didn't include that fork uh, changes in the code. And we d uh, we're not going to support proof of stake. But everything else, we are keeping compatibility, uh, intentionally keeping compatibility, and uh, to, to use the same tools and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to have this compatibility in near future. In the future, so uh, there will yeah, be Yeah, I mean, there's no plans to, to, mm -hmm. to change it significantly to right. avoid compatibility with uh, mm -hmm. Ethereum ETH. Okay, I look forward to that. Uh, the Ethereum Classic Roadmap 2018 said that Ethereum Classic aims to develop its network. Mm -hmm. How is that going so far? Oh, we have uh, many plans. Uh, have many plans, <laughs> but uh, less people <laughs> and plans. Uh, but yeah, current focus is on, on scale issues. Uh, we are working on, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this moving uh, execution out of the main chain to mm -hmm. side chains. Um, and I hope we can pr produce some prototype uh, soon in following months, by end of the year. Uh, and that's the main focus of project. We are also working on uh, different projects like uh, we, we, we recently we, we made uh, and we're going to release, I think, uh, next week, uh, Emerald Wallet, mm. which is a, mm, a reference implementation of Emerald Platform. And ETC Dev is mostly focused on, on the tools for developers. We, uh, we are building a network uh, and helping us developers to build on, on Ethereum ETC. There, as I mentioned initially, there are other companies that have uh, different plans, and they're working on, on their ideas, on compatibility with uh, ETH also, mm. and, and so on. Uh, we are more focused on, on helping uh, companies to build the application on DC, helping engineers to build the application on DC and uh, make it uh, scalable. Mm -hmm. So you kind of went on with the future plans as well, but could you please tell us about the actual future plans for years to come for Ethereum Classic? Uh, the, uh, the scale problem, I think it will take some, some time. It's, uh, if you're going to have some prototype this year, it will take a year more probably to, to make it more mature. And uh, another goal for I think the next years will be optimize uh, our virtual machine uh, uh, to get a performance close to, to native languages uh, and uh, to allow developers to mm -hmm. execute their code, uh, any code actually. Uh, mm, like including video processing, maybe in smart contracts, that will be really good. Uh, 
So we're going to focus on optimizations of virtual machine, make it really fast uh, and uh, adding scale to, to blockchain in general. And it will take a few years. Oh, sounds great. Uh, when we talk about Ethereum Classic in Korea specifically, uh, it autom automatically reminds Korean investors of the scandal called DAO hack. Mm -hmm. uh, still, many Korean investors wonder about, wonder about what exactly happened and in May 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, although most people understand briefly, mm -hmm. they don't know what exactly went down in the deep down. So mm -hmm. was the inherent issue of ETC solved? And what's going on in regards to this issue? Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, in May 2016, uh, there's a big uh, first ICO on, mm -hmm. on ETH, and um, a lot of money were invested. Uh, but unfortunately, there is a, a bug in, in that uh, ICO smart contract. So hacker was able to, to steal some money, I think like, uh, like 30 or 50 million dollars. I don't remember. There is, uh, yeah, there is a lot of actions. Uh, someone stole money from hacker again. That's just something complicated. But uh, the problem was that the Ethereum Foundation decided that they want to return uh, the stolen money because they can, uh, because in central authority they just uh, decided to return this money because probably, most likely, they invested a lot in that ICO and they basically wanted to return their own money. Uh, so part of the community was disagree with that uh, because that violated basic principles of blockchain that. Uh, only owner of private key can uh, can, can move the, its his funds, so nobody else can can, can took money from you, your coins. Uh, that's still the same for most of other uh, coins, for Bitcoin obviously, but uh, it was violated in ETH, and it's they did it once. It's it's most likely they will do that again. Uh, it just depends on the power of some authorities that will force them to do it, no, because it, there is a proven fact of, of doing that once. So for many people, that wasn't acceptable, and they they followed the original chain, call the issue later. Uh, lastly, is there any comments that you want to leave to our viewers? Um, so that's, as I mentioned, my first time in, in South Korea, but I'm going to be next time actually in September because there, is, there will be a big event uh, in Seoul uh, in September 12-13, uh, there will be ETC Summit. Uh, so many uh, people from ETC, from Team Classic will come, engineers, miners, uh, traders, uh, businesses building on ETC uh, to, to talk, uh, kind of conference. So, um, I think uh, it's a good pl place to, to, to invite other people to, to come to our uh, ATC Summit. Uh, so uh, Google uh, atcsummit.com, I think. That's and great. I'll be happy to see you. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you again in September. So that concludes our interview for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for inviting me. 네, 오늘 인터뷰에 응해주신 이거루 아타문오프 대표님 진심으로 감사드립니다. 저희 코인 인터뷰가 준비한 내용은 여기까지입니다. 코인 인터뷰는 앞으로도 유익한 코인 정보를 제공해드리기 위해 노력하겠습니다. 시청해주신 여러분 고맙습니다.